it's 72 degrees today. Believe it when we see it, right? The Lord is smiling already. It's getting warmer. It's getting warmer. Back in the 40s next week. Lord is smiling already. But then back in the 40s the rest of the week. How many were without power for more than two days? Wow, a lot of yeah. We were, we were 33 hours. We weren't all that bad. But it's, don't appreciate it till it's gone, do we? Really, and, uh, but thank God we had our, our grill on the porch. I could boil water, got a little thing there. And, uh, thank God for that. I had to have instant coffee, but better than none at all. Uh -huh. right, John? You can always yeah. go to the gas station for coffee. What's that? Go to the gas station for coffee. They have it. Yeah. That's what I have yeah. there. Yeah. Or Dunkin' Donuts. And we had a lot of chicken on the grill, so, <laughs> so we ate. Do you need help, Kyle? I've entitled my message this morning. Does everybody have their power on now? No. All right, good. I never use it. I never use it. You've got a different power. Thank morning. God for the cell phones, right? Yeah, green. Uh, yeah, no green no. electricity. Still no internet. Yeah, we. <laughs> but um, anyway, we can still keep contact in today's world. I've entitled my message uh, today, Save Your Time. Uh, if you would open up the Mark's Gospel, Chapter 7. I'll start in verse 31. Would you stand as I read the Word of God? I'm, I'm using the New American Standard Bible today. This is my favorite Bible written. You can follow there. I think it's the NIV in the, in the pews. Starting in verse 31. Again, he went out from the region of Tyre, meaning Jesus, and came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, within the region of Decapolis. They brought to him one who was deaf and spoke with difficulty, and they implored him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside from the crowd by himself and put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, he touched his tongue with the saliva, and looking up to heaven with a deep sigh, he said to him, Epetra, which is, be opened. And his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was removed, and he began speaking plainly. And he gave them orders not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them, the more widely they continued to proclaim it. They were utterly astonished, saying, He has done all things well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Heavenly Father, I ask your anointing on me as I deliver this message. Open our hearts to receive what your word has today. And more importantly, may we apply it to our lives that we may glorify you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mark is the only one of the evangelists of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, to record this account of Jesus. It's only in Mark's gospel. We find Jesus here attempting to get some R&R. &R however, if you go back to verse 24 of, of, of Mark 7, it says, Jesus got up and went away from there to the region of Tyre. And when he had entered a house, he wanted, to, uh, he wanted no one to know of it, yet he could not escape notice. He, went, he needed some rest. We all know that Jesus became like us, a human form, and he became tired. He needed some rest, and he wanted to chill out, okay, and, and, and in his house and get some rest. But see, uh, so instead of resting in Tyre, verse 31 tells us that he left Tyre and Sidon, and in doing so, he travels through the district of Decapolis. This district consisted of 10 cities, and these cities, for some reason, had been granted special privileges by the Roman conquerors in 65 BC. The facts are these. It was here that Jesus travels to retreat into privacy, to escape the opposition, to uh, instruct his disciples, to visit certain towns, and to touch people with special needs. But why did Jesus call this man aside in verse 33 today? Why did he do it? Why did Jesus put his fingers in his ears? Verse 33. Why did Jesus spit and touch the man's tongue? Verse 33. Why did Jesus look, look up towards heaven in verse 34? 
And what did Jesus mean when he said he packed out? And, 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 and what difference does it make to all of us here today in our lifetime? What difference does it make to us here April 24th, 2022? The answer to that can be found in two verses. In Mark 7, 33 and 34, where Jesus does five things. He separates, he spits, he sees, he sighs, and he speaks. Maybe I should have called this message the big S message. Or the Superman message. With all the S's, but I didn't. This is about uh, uh, alone time, a uh, 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 Save your time alone with Jesus. Point number one, Jesus separates verse 33. The Bible records the problems this man had, this man at the Copolis was having. He had a speech impediment. He was deaf and he spoke with much difficulty. In other words, uh, uh, he had trouble hearing and he had trouble speaking. Next time I go to my foot doctor, I had to have a work take off again this week, and uh, Dr. Romani, I don't know if anybody knows him, but he's a good doctor, and a uh, little impediment there, I'd like to pray with him. So the crowd or multitude brought the man to Jesus expecting two things. They implored or beseeched Jesus to lay his hands on the man. And they expected Jesus to heal the man right in front of everybody. But Jesus had other plans. Verse 33 says that Jesus took him aside, away from the crowd, by himself. Why did Jesus do this, Pastor? Why did Jesus take the man aside in privacy, in private, just him and the man? Why did Jesus call him away from the crowd? And why did Jesus separate and isolate this man? Well, I believe the reason Jesus did this that is the same reason that he's drawn you and I apart to his house this day. To fix the man's attention on Jesus alone. To remove this man from earthly distractions. To excite this man's confidence in Jesus alone. And to leave deep, a deep spiritual impressions upon the man's heart. And to teach us all that alone times with the Lord are growing times. Jesus pulled him aside for some savior time, to send him his savior. Think of it, folks, if you will. What happens when we uh, disconnect ourselves from the value system of this world? What happens? What happens is this. We connect ourselves with God's value system when we spend time alone with him. Amen. In prayer and devotional time. For the believer, it is critical. Amen, Lord, yes. It's a time when God narrows our interests and puts more focus on your relationship with him. It's a time when God gets our full attention. And it's a time when God separates from the things around us and he speaks to us. You need alone time. I don't know if you all remember Marilyn Monroe. She said one time, it seems like everyone wants a piece of my life. She's needed a long time with Jesus is what she needed. She needed that. She needed Jesus. I'm not going to judge her. I pray she knew the Lord before she died. I don't know. But she said that. Let me ask all of you here this morning. It's still morning. Is there anything God is wanting to separate you from? Think about it. When's the last time you've been alone in the presence of God? You know, just you and him. Stop and listen, folks. Is God calling and pulling you away from the crowd, away from the busyness and, and the noisiness of life, away from distracting voices, <laughs> trying to speak to you alone, have some savior time, just you and him? It's a wonderful time, folks. Now, I have never audibly heard God speak. Maybe some of you have, I don't know. But I've heard him speak. Does that make sense to you? Because he speaks to our hearts. And a long time in prayer. God will answer. Did you know that God answers prayer? Amen. 
And when you talk to him, besides even praying, just talking to him, you know, uh, um, God desires that, and we need to desire that too. Jesus separated this man from the crowd. Let him separate you away from the crowd and spend that personal time with him. Just you and him. Even if you start your day 15 minutes alone or, or at night, when, uh, whenever is the best time for you. And he'll speak with you and he'll fellowship with you. Oh, the songwriter put it so well when we sang it this morning. He walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I'm his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. That songwriter had a long time with Jesus. Then I love that verse. I, I can't remember all of it, the last verse, but he bids me go with the voice of woe. In other words, the Lord was sorry to see the, man, the songwriter go, but he knew his human limitations that he got tired and had to go. He bids me go with the voice of woe. The Lord loves to spend time with you. And you need to enjoy and love spending time with him. It's a great time of fellowship, just you and the Lord in your Savior time. Does everybody believe that? Say amen. 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 <clears throat> Two, Jesus spits. Now, there's probably 6,820 theological sermons preached on this. Why did Jesus spit? My son Doug was a little boy. He was playing baseball. And I bought him that big leaf chew the gum. So he's got the wad. And I said, I gotta teach him how to spit right. <laughs> right. Lewis, you understand this part, right? You're up to the plate. Yeah. I said, you gotta do it like Reggie Jackson. You gotta make it look good. Okay. Anyway, why did Jesus spit? Now, after separating the man from the crowd, still in verse 33, it says, and put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, he touched his tongue with the saliva. Now, if I called you up here to heal you, or lay hands on you for healing, <laughs> you're not going to want me to spit and stick it on your tongue. <laughs> but this is exactly what Jesus did. Okay, Pastor, why did Jesus put his fingers in the guy's ears? Well, as we know, the man couldn't hear. He had trouble speaking. He couldn't express how he felt. So I believe that if the man was to be encouraged at all, it had to be by the touch of Jesus himself, touched by the master's hand. And I believe Jesus was telling the man, I can uh, make your ears hear again. It was natural since the man could not hear and had troubled speech that Jesus, uh, uh, that Jesus spoke to him by signs and not words. And that's why Jesus touched his tongue. I believe it was a sign to awaken this man's faith. And Jesus, I believe, is saying, I can cause your tongue to speak again properly. I believe it's Jesus telling me, and I can overcome these obstacles. And to tell you and I that Jesus can produce, uh, uh, can pierce through any of uh, every objection as to why we can't be healed and delivered by the power of God. You know what, church? The church needs to believe again that Jesus Christ still heals. And that the power of God is within his resurrection power. As we keep saying, the scriptures say, greater is he who is in us Amen. than he that's in the world. Amen. So, Pastor, why the saliva? Andrew would say, don't teach him how to spit. I don't know why. He's got to spit. He's a ball player. He's got to do it. Why did Jesus touch the man's tongue with saliva? Good question. Because there wasn't any healing virtue in the saliva or the spittle. Some do believe this is a, a, that there is medicinal purposes in saliva. Another time in Mark 8, verse 22 through 26, Jesus spit in the eyes of the blind man at Bethsaida. In any case, it's not explained if there's healing in there because you know why? Five million spit Ministries would rise up. <laughs> send me a thousand dollars and I'll send you a spit on a piece of paper. 
and let it touch you and heal you. That's why it's not explained. That's what I believe. In any case, I believe that Jesus' saliva was a symbol to the man and to us that the healing virtue of Jesus with him emanates and flows from Jesus Christ alone. The saliva was and is symbolic of the flowing of his power and also a symbol that mercy flows out of Jesus. Thirdly, third point this morning, Jesus sees, verse 14, 34a, and looking up to heaven, Jesus spits and so then his ears, touches his tongue and looks up to heaven. I wonder if there's instant replay in heaven. I wonder if we can see all these things that Jesus did when we're there. Wouldn't you like to see them? I would. I'd like to see him down here. And looking up to heaven, after putting his fingers in the man's ears, after spitting and touching the man's tongue with his saliva, Jesus looks up to heaven. And Pastor Doug, what's so important of Jesus looking up to heaven here? Well, anything Jesus does is significant. So if he looked up to heaven, it has to be significant. But it's important in this healing and all healings to notice which way Jesus looked. He looked up to heaven. Why? I think for two reasons. One, he knew that only his Father above in heaven had the power to answer his prayer. <clears throat> this is called dependence on God. And two, he wanted us to know where our help comes from in time of need. This is called direction. Dependence and direction. That would have been a good title. I think you know where I'm going with all of this this morning. Which way are you looking, church, for all your needs? Who are you depending on in life? And what direction are you going? Is it upward or is it vertical? Or are you just laying flat horizontally? Vertical means upward. Horizontal means flat. Vertical versus horizontal. Horizontal people live agitated lives. Vertical people live anxious free lives. Horizontal people toss and turn. Vertical people sleep well at night. My wife will fall asleep in the middle of a sentence. I'm usually a few minutes later in her because I watch all the ball games. She's upstairs watching some chick flick. And I'll go up and she'll be awake sometimes. And I'll say, well, how's, how's your day? <laughs> it's that fast. It's an Don't tell her I said all that because she'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going on vacation. I don't want to miss vacation. Right, I'll, I'll be here next week. <laughs> Vertical people sleep well at night. Horizontal people have to strive and strive and strive for things. Vertical people cast all their anxieties upon the Lord. In any circumstance in life, folks, we need to see what Jesus saw. He saw dependence on God is needed in life. He saw direction from God is needed to make it in life. Now, uh, number four. Point number four, Jesus sighs. <sighs> Ever sighs? Ever get tired? Just... <sighs> I do it a lot. And it says, Jesus sighs and looking up to heaven with a deep sigh. Verse 34. The word sigh here is translated to mean groaned. Why did Jesus groan? And I pray this can bring a tear of joy and compassion to your eyes today. I believe Jesus groaned because he was a man of sorrow. Acquainted with grief. Isaiah 53. I can't get through Isaiah 53 without tears falling from my eyes. I can't help it. Yeah. Acquainted with grief. Just read it sometimes. It's such, such heart-wrenching chapter. Because I believe he groaned because he touched, he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Our human limitations. Because he is moved with compassion towards all of us. Remember, compassion means he feels our pain. Because his heart is broken over those in chains. Because he sees what sin has done to all of us. I believe this is why he's grown. Because he sees those who are enslaved to sin this very hour. 
And because he sees and seeks to restore the wounds that have left a scar in the lives of people. And everyone in this room, I'll say, you have a scar somewhere in your life. Maybe, maybe even now. So Jesus separated, he spit, he sees her, looks up, he sighs, or groans, and so now, point number five, Jesus speaks, verse 34. He said to him, Ephatha. Why did Jesus say this, and what does Ephatha mean? Ephatha is an Aramaic word that means be released. Oh, I love that, be released. So in this whole occurrence, there was a look Jesus sees. There was a groan Jesus feels. There was a word Jesus speaks. And when he does, he releases the man from his chains. He could speak. He got rid of a speak impediment. He could hear. Jesus releases the man from his bondage. And he releases the man from his prison. He can now hear and speak perfectly. Wow. And you know what, folks? The truth of this whole message is that Jesus still releases people today. He's still saying the path today to you, to me, to all who will believe and trust in him. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. He's saying the path to all who want to be free from sin and guilt and condemnation, from alcohol, cigarettes, free from drug addiction, pornography, Free from fear, bitterness, anger, worry, greed, anxiety, insecurity, guilt, and free from low self-esteem and self-centeredness. Free from all these things. Apatha, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you will be free from all those things. You name it. You name it. Whatever can bring you down, whatever it is in this world, Jesus can heal it and take care of it if you put your trust in him. Whether it's something that has you in chains, I have a few people, I won't give you their names because I don't have a right to do that, that I celebrate my sobriety with. Because a, a God set a path to it 40 something years ago. 1975, that's 47 years. A path. And I share with a couple people I know very well that have gone through the same thing. And what a joy it is, what a victory it is because Jesus spoke. Jesus spoke. Praise God. He took me from a bar stool drinking Budweiser, constantly sneaking out at night to buy six packs when my wife was asleep because I already drank the six that were in there. I know a few of you know what I'm talking about. And he says, I path out to that. So I'm going to put you behind the pulpit. I said, say what? And he's going to put you behind the pulpit. But whatever it is in your life, Jesus will say the same thing to you and release you of it. What a revelation from this whole incident today. We've learned that Jesus separates us and calls us to himself for some savior time. Jesus spits the showers that all healing virtue flows from him alone. Jesus sees and looks heavenward for dependence and direction and teaches us to do the same. Jesus sighs and feels with deep groanings uh, what you and I feel this hour. And Jesus speaks a path that will be released and delivered and go home free from the power of God. Bless his majestic name. I just love my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love it when Jesus says to Peter, when he asks his disciples, who do they say that I am? They all, well, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say this. Peter, who do you say that I am? He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. And how did Jesus answer? Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but your heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. How many people here today believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Amen. Just lift your hand. Yes. But did you know that your heavenly Father revealed that to you? Mm -hmm. That's why you're here today. That's why you have eternal life. Now, as I conclude this message, I want us all to remember way back in verse 33 that Jesus took the man in our story today aside away from the crowd. I love that. Can't help it. This is so important, folks. 
Because we need to spend time alone with Jesus, away from the crowd. You know, the scriptures clearly teach us for Satan not the assembling together, as some are in the habit of doing. It's good to assemble like this. But we all need that long time, that Savior time, alone with Jesus. We need that precious time alone with him. That private time to pray. We need to fix our attention on him alone and remove any earthly distractions. Even if you sit there and say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for what you're doing. And just thank and praise him. And, oh, it's just a wonderful time between you and him. And you'll know that he's responding. That's the way our God is. Your heart will know that he's responding. So dear people, let's apply life application to our personal lives. Uh, to our personal lives. From verse 33, because in Savior time, we learn to get alone with him, with Jesus. In Savior, we learn to stop moving and sit still before the Lord. In Savior time, we learn to be quiet. We learn to refocus our lives. We learn that we can speak plainly and easily to the Lord. And we learn to be more sensitive in hearing what the Lord has to say to us. I'll never forget one time in my hometown, Pittsfield, it was the next town over, Lenox or Lee Mass, I guess. I went to this well, the spring water, because our water was off of that home, so we would load up go through the well. And there's always a line. And this man was standing in front of me. And I had my jugs there, you know, the empty milk jug, whatever. And I kept, I, I just kept feeling God wanted me to say something to him. I'm trying to figure out what, how to start a conversation. And so the man turns to me, I didn't say a word. And he says to me, this reminds me of the story in the Bible about the woman at the well. <laughs> you talk about an opening. <laughs> okay, we were able to share the Lord together. It was just the Holy Spirit. See how he speaks to you? And, and he opened his mouth first. <laughs> but still that, that sense was there that God was speaking. Then another time I went to the well, there was a guy there, he had a, a gun on his belt and, a, and a, you know, on his side. And I said, you know what, I said, I'm not going there. I said, I've been watching too many crime shows. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out the guy was a police officer. He was like a detective. But anyway, in plain English, folks, as I, I near the end here today, whether we're alone or among people, you'll always carry with you a portable sanctuary of your heart because you belong to Jesus Christ for all those who have faith in him. Amen. Now, I, I need to end this and I'd like to pray with anybody here, if you just bow your head, close your, close your eyes. If there's any in this place today where Jesus needs to say a path to you to release you from anything going on in your life. Yes, I see a hand, yes. Yes, I see hands going up all over the church. Well, let's believe the Lord today. Let the Lord touch you, Heavenly Father. You saw every hand that has gone up. Lord, and, and, and I pray that you touch and say a path that be released to every one of these people to release them for what needs to go. And my hand is up too, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we all believe this and that indeed it will happen today in the near future whenever you choose. But touch and heal your people. Release them from any chains that would hold them down. Lord, may we all look upward. May we all groan. May we all just say thank you. Epatha, be released. And thank you, Father. Bless your people today. Thank you for their honesty. You know who they are cause this to happen in their lives. And I'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, Lord bless you. I just sense the powerful presence of the Lord here today. Amen. Amen.
Sarah, would you go get Angie? Take the time for two. Thank you. We're going to share in communion today. It's such a special time.